Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. Let go of negative thinking and stop living for the weekend with your host, Fran Excel. So welcome to the show. As always, it's Fran Excel Mindset Coach helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life that you love. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm very grateful you've chosen to put me in your earbuds today. Please do hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything and do leave me a review. I love, love, love reading them and it really helps me get found by other people who need to hear what I share. I'd also love you to email me your mindset and productivity questions or topics you'd love me to cover um, to hello at franexcel.com because I know a lot of you think I'm inside your heads because you tell me all the time. But if I don't know what you need, I can't give it to you. So let me know. Have you ever had someone be a no-show to a discovery call or agree to sign up to your services to then just ghost you afterwards, never to be heard of again, or even one step further, blocking you, yet you have no idea what you've done. I'm willing to bet that you have. It is shockingly common. You very probably did absolutely nothing. It's unfortunately part and parcel of having your own business that there will be the odd no-show, but it's really important not to take it to heart. I see time and time again, people feeling like it's their fault, in inverted commas, or something that they've done has caused it. And it can lead to that dreaded fear of rejection. So what happens? They don't put themselves out there in the first place to get the calls. And then what? No clients. All because of something that was completely not their fault. Now, in this context, I'm talking about the genuine, never to be seen again, just couldn't be bothered to show up kind of instances. Yeah, life happens. It can feel pretty rubbish. And it's also incredibly irritating to have someone disrespect you in your time in that way. But it happens. But there are plenty of things that can be put in place to minimize it. So I'm going to go through a few of them for you. Number one, make sure your content attracts and repels at the same time. Yep. You want it to attract the right people and repel the wrong ones, yeah? So you want to only get people on the phone who get you, get what you're about, are clear on your values and how you help because like attract like. You repel people by making sure you talk about what you don't agree with or any strong opinions that you have, what you think is right and wrong, all sorts of things where people will either go, yes, I love what she's about, or Ugh, I just can't get on board. Both are great. Yes, really. So have a think about how you can start bringing these things into your message to make sure that you are, that you attract the people who are already on your wavelength and repel the people who just aren't for you. Number two, schedule, we know how I love a schedule, in particular days and times in your week that you will accept discovery calls. So you're not context switching all the time. The most annoying thing about sitting there and waiting for someone to show up is if it interrupts your day in some way. You know, like if you had to rush home or whatever it may be, if it interrupts your day in some way and has a negative impact. I only have a limited number of spots to speak to people and they are particular times of the day, only on certain days. I protect my time as best I can, part and parcel of being a productivity ninja. (laughs) But I protect my time so that if someone doesn't show up, it doesn't throw my day out of whack too much. Doesn't mean it's not annoying. I find it rude, but it definitely helps take the sting out and doesn't have too much of an effect on my day. So number three, pre-qualify with your calendar link and questionnaire. I am constantly tweaking this and making changes. But when you book in a call with me, there are a series of questions to answer and boxes to tick to make sure you're clear on all the information. So are your clients or potential clients clear of where and when the call is? Are they clear that the call is to make sure you're both a good fit for each other? Are they clear of the time and the time zone? That's a big one. Make it as clear as possible and set some boundaries early on. It will certainly 
weed out the people who aren't committed. So go have a nosy at mine. The link will be below. And if you're ready to book a call, then fill it in and click send. <laughs> so next one, number four, have your prices readily available for them to see before the call. Now, there are many schools of thought here about displaying prices. I'm all for it myself. There aren't on my website at the moment, not to say they won't be in the future, but they are on my form. It needs to be what's right for you. But I personally don't want to feel like I need to persuade someone to work with me. So I make the price range clear in my form because I want them to be ready. You know, it's also how I buy myself. If I don't know the price in advance, it actively puts me off. You know, there's a saying that, you know, if, if they won't tell you the price, you can't afford it. You know? But for me, if they know my prices in advance, then they're going into it with their eyes wide open and it's the final piece of the puzzle to working with someone rather than the first. Yeah. So there are some people who won't book in anyway because of the I can't afford it gremlin, you know, that may have converted on the call. But it's just not my bag, to be honest. I want people to be ready and excited to make the commitment to change their lives. You've got to do what's right for you. But for me, when I have a limited amount of availability, that's what works for me. Getting people on the phone who are ready. Yeah. Number five, charge a refundable fee. I don't do this one right now, but that's not to say that I won't in the future, because I do actually think this is a great way to get a commitment from people. There are plenty of scheduling calendar software apps that can be integrated with Stripe or PayPal or whatever payment thing that you use. Um, and they're brilliant. People just don't value what they get for free a lot of the time. And this is why this is a really good way to get them to put a little bit more skin in the game. Now, the next one so easily overlooked automated reminders if you're using a scheduling software like calendly which i hope you are something along those lines make sure you turn the reminders on yeah i personally set mine 30 minutes before the call because it's enough time if they've forgotten or life's happened to pop me an email to say i'm really sorry my bad something or something's come up can we reschedule it's not ideal but life happens and I'm super understanding of that. We are all juggling lots of plates and these things happen. So you can set them to the day before, 10 minutes before, or all of the above. You know, do what's right for you. But for me, if someone has seen a reminder and still doesn't show up or email afterwards, then it's a lucky escape because they wouldn't be an ideal client in the long run. The next thing to talk about is people who say yes on the phone and then they disappear off the face of the planet. The dreaded ghosters. Ugh. It's happened to me. It happens to most people at some point in this game. And it feels horrible. But, as always, there are a few ways to hopefully avoid this too. So one is take payment over the phone. This is the number one way to avoid ghosters. It's really easy once someone has said yes to get off the phone. And while they're actually waiting for everything to go through, the buyer's remorse gremlin to sneak in. Again, it happens. Either take a deposit or something along those lines, if you can. And then if this happens and for whatever reason payment hasn't been sorted over the phone, then I will chase once, possibly twice, and call it out if it's appropriate. I'll always check and say, I really hope everything's okay. And I will always see if I can help, based on conversation and rapport that we've built up previously, always. But if they don't reply, then again, they aren't an ideal client in the first place. So next thing, see it as a lucky escape. I've mentioned this already, but I really want this to hit home. You don't want to work with the wrong people. It's exhausting. It's stressful. It's frustrating. It's a time suck. You don't want to work with people who don't share your values or ethics. It really is a lucky escape. Nobody wants a flaky client. They just aren't committed to getting the results. Yeah. And the last thing, please remember, it is not about you. It really isn't. Please, please don't allow it to discourage you. Let it allow you to tweak your processes and move on quickly. And if you can take on board and implement even a few of these strategies or ways of thinking, then it will make a huge, huge, huge difference. Be careful what you tolerate. You're showing people it's okay to be treated that way. And if you've been the no-show or the ghost to someone before, I really hope this makes you think twice about doing it again. This certainly isn't designed to shame in any way. It's designed to highlight 
so you can hopefully make a better choice in the future and appreciate what it might be like on the other side of your actions or maybe you even want to reach out with an explanation or apology who knows up to you stranger things have happened but at the end of the day people are very understanding on the most part life happens gremlins sneak in remorse sets in fear sets in sometimes we don't know we you know we just don't know what to do so we freeze but allow the person on the other side to help you help you make the right decision for you or just give them some time in their day back and respect that we're all in the same boat and we're all in this together we can drag each other down or build each other up and i know which camp i'd rather be in so if you got value from this and you know in your gut that now is the time to step up and start rewiring your thinking and changing things for yourself, then book in a free discovery call so we can work out what needs to happen to get you from where you're at right now to the action taking success you know you can be. And if you want my eyes and ears on your problems, I work with people one on one and through my proactive pants mastermind. So stop waiting for if and when and decide to change things now because you can. And as always, I hope that was helpful. So any questions, just let me know. And as always, I will see you next week. Bye.